Is UTSA head coach Jeff Trailer the guy for Texas A&M? I'm not so sure. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. So today we're going to have the conversation about UTSA head coach Jeff Trailer. And the thing about Jeff, Tra- Jeff Trailer is he's been coaching for a very long time. We're going to run through his history, his record at UTSA and all that. And I'm going to make both sides of the argument why I think it could work out, why it'd be a good hire, and why I think that maybe it wouldn't you know, be the best option. So Jeff Trailer coached high school football from 2001 to 2014 very successfully. Then in 2015, he took a position at Texas. He was there 2015, 2016, uh, various different positions on the offense, helped around the offense. Then he goes to SMU in 2017, where he is the associate head coach and the running backs coach. Then 2018, 2019, um, he goes to Arkansas, associate head coach, running backs coach, same thing. Then in 2020, he is offered the head coaching job at UTSA. Of course, takes that. He's been there since, and he's been really good. I mean, look at what they've done since he's been there. 30-10, and 10, the record since Jeff Trailer has been the head coach at UTSA, 20-3 and 3 in conference. And then the season before he took over the position as the head coach at UTSA, they were 4-8. and eight. That is something I like to see. Now, very, I think Jeff Trailer and Mike Elko were very similar candidates. And what I mean by that is, they both took over that, you know, they had some positions. You know, Mike Elko was DC. He was at AM, he was at some places, Jeff Trailers, Texas SMU. And then they get their shot at the head coaching job. Elko is at the Power Five level at Duke, Trailers at obviously not at the Power Five level at UTSA. So then, you know, they both take programs to the next level. Like Elko took over not a great football team over at Duke and flipped it around. Exactly what Jeff Trailer did at UTSA. So now the question is, can Jeff Trailer come in and be successful at Texas A&M? And that is the question. You know, I just think there are so many small details that are the difference from coaching at UTSA to coaching at Texas A&M. I think that at a school like UTSA, at smaller schools, it's, you get players that are, you're obviously not getting five stars. You're not getting the talent Texas A&M has. There's you know no question there. But you're getting players and you're developing. The key to pl- at schools like that is development, 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 which I think to me can be a positive for a coach like a Jeff Trailer when it comes to getting this job because you look at it and he goes, man, if I can take no stars, two stars, three stars and develop them into really good football players, what am I going to be able to do with four and five star recruits? And that is kind of my argument for Jeff Trailer on the positive side of things is like, yeah, he can, he can, um, he can take these players. He can take these talented recruits and develop into even, you know, even better players. I think that's what we saw with Jimbo is like, you get in the talent and the talent just kind of like stays what it was. You don't see a lot of the talent wasn't getting much better during the, its time at Texas A&M, and that's kind of what I'm getting at. I think Jeff Trailer could take four- and five-star players and elevate them to the next level. I do, like, I've talked about how Mike Elko and Jeff Trailer aren't the most exciting candidates to me, and I think we can, I don't know if all agree on that. I, if they hired either of these two coaches, I would be happy, truly. I would be. I think these guys could succeed. My argument has kind of been, I just feel like, paying the buyout to not go get a more proven head coach would surprise me some. That's why I don't think it's going to be a Jeff Trailer or a Mike Elko, but if it is, we will welcome them with open arms. I think they could be really successful, 
but it is a very bold move. You know, with the world NIL and the resources Texas A&M has, this is their opportunity to be a good football program, to make moves, to win games. You got to make the right hire right now. You cannot swing and miss right now after what went on with the previous regime. It can't happen. So Jeff Trailer is definitely an interesting candidate for this job. I like his coaching resume. I like what he's been able to do at UTSA, take that program from four and eight in 2020 or 2019 to, uh, I was seven and five in 20 um, in his first season. And then like I said, keep just winning and winning and winning. And that's what I like to see is he proved he can win football games. He can win football games at the division one level as a head coach. And I like to see that. I mean, he's been at some, he was at Texas. He was at SMU. He's had some positions at those schools, you know, running backs coach at SMU, um, lots of different offensive positions at Texas. Like, you know that he's been a part of the recruiting conversations. You know he's been a part of all that. So Jeff Trailer is a guy who can come in and succeed at Texas A&M. I believe that. I really, really do believe that. I just feel like there are some more candidates for this job, some of which we've discussed, some of which we'll continue to discuss throughout um, the coming weeks here at Locked on Aggies. But I feel like there are some candidates that just might be less risky and that is the word that scares me, is risky. I don't think Texas A&M is in a position right now to make a risky hire. I think Texas A&M is in a position right now where they need to just make, the, make a home run hire because you can't, and this is what I've talked about a lot. Um, Jake Crane said this on the show yesterday. You can't swing and miss. You can't swing and miss on this hire. You just can't. This has to be a home run hire. This has to be your guy for the future because, you know, you can't continue to fail with the resources Texas A&M has. So Jeff Trailer is a candidate who's going, who has been talked about, will continue to be talked about. And another thing we need to add, they, we heard from the higher-ups of Texas A&M, they want a guy who can come in and close this class out, make sure that they're, you know, so – I think that really your chances of getting like a DeBoer or some of these guys who are going to be fighting deep into the season for playoff berth, stuff like that, I think it kind of rules them out. So I think an Elko, a Jeff Trailer might be the kind of guys you're looking at. So um, I, think it could, I think it could be a splash higher. I do. I think it could be, but I think it's a big risk. And I just don't know if Texas A&M is in – a spot to be super risky right now because you can't mess this up. If you mess this up, this program will become a laughing stock. You can't swing and miss on this hire. You have to, you know, I get the people commenting every day. People don't understand. I, I, don't, I don't think people understand what the resources that Texas A&M has to where if you make the right hire, this team can be so successful. You have to make the right hire or else, you know, truly, Texas A&M will become a laughing stock. You have to make this right hire. Texas A&M fans deserve it. The players deserve it on the current roster recruiting class. Everybody deserves the right hire. And I, I trust in Ross Bjork to give it to Texas A&M fans and these players and, and um, the coaches that might be kept on staff. I trust in Ross Bjork. So is Jeff Trailer the guy? It's like I don't want to say no because I wouldn't be like upset if they hired him. I just think that it, it would be risky and risky scares me. But I think Jeff Trailer could succeed at Texas AM. I like him. Watch interviews. I really like the guy. Really. I mean, I think he could be a great person to take over as the head coach for Texas AM. I just think it'd be risky because he hasn't been, you know, a head coach at the power five level. He hasn't, you know, had to do this as a head coach. And that is a little bit risky to me. But at the end of the day, I think Jeff Trailer is a guy who could come in and succeed at Texas A&M. We'll just have to see how it plays out with him. Next, we're going to talk about Elijah Robinson, the interim head coach. Is his name serious? Could he really be a candidate for this job? I'm not totally sure, but we're going to talk about it coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. First, we're going to talk about our wonderful friends over at Price Picks. I love Price Picks. It is the best way to go bet on daily fantasy sports. 
It's simple. There's no sharps. There's no sharks. You're betting over. You're betting under on lines. And that is what I love so much about Price Picks. It's fun to use. They've got every sport you can want. They got football, baseball, basketball. Uh, you can and you can cross sports. You could take Patrick Mahomes passing yards and LeBron James points. That is what is so fun about Prize Picks. I highly recommend it. Truly, I, I I think it's a fun it's a fun thing to use. It's a fun way to gamble on daily sports. I enjoy it. It's a ton of fun. You got to go check out Prize Picks. Go to prizepickscom slash college and use code LockedOnCollege for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepickscom slash college and code LockedOnCollege for a first deposit match up to $100. So now we are going to talk about Elijah Robinson and could he stick around as Texas A&M's head coach? You know, I think that his coaching history is a little more in depth than some thought, than kind of I even thought. I, I, you know, I did more research on him. He was at Penn State, where, you know, where he played his college football from 26 to, to, to 2013, doing lots of different stuff. Uh, some of it was like in NFL liaison, different things like that. Uh, but a long time over there at Penn State. Then he goes, um, and then, and then that's when he starts to take over kind of as a coach there, um, later in his time, he's helps with the run game, the D line. Then in 2017, he goes to Baylor to coach their defensive line. And then he's been at Texas A&M ever since now, of course, this year, he's kind of the associate head coach, run game coordinator, defensive line. And he's been, I mean, he's a guy who, what I like about him is he fires up recruits, and that is such a big deal. Having recruits fired up, having recruits excited about what you have to offer about your program, that is what gets me excited about a coach, and that's what Elijah Robinson does. And that's why I think he is so – he he is a genuine candidate. I mean, he could be – we talk about you know Glenn Schumann as, as a young up-and-coming coach. Elijah Robinson is a young up-and-coming guy who could be a really good football coach for a very long time. So – um. Do I think he will get the position? I don't. Do I think that his name is an interesting one to keep in conversation? I do, because I think that, you know, I talked about this, the whole situation over at Auburn, how they, you know, had Cadillac Williams take over um, as the interim head coach last season. He's great. Um, He brings hope to that program. They keep him on and staff and he now he's continues to help the running backs help the the staff over there. I think Elijah Robinson could do something similar at um Texas A&M. I think that I'll tell you one thing, recruits love him, players love him, everybody loves him. If you don't give him the head coaching job, which like I said, I don't lean toward that happening, but if you don't give him the job, you have got to keep him on the coaching staff. I've talked about this a ton, but you know Elijah Robinson has been a guy that um, you know recruits have talked about how much they've loved him. We've had recruits come out like um, a Miles Davis, the safety commit in twenty four, came out and said this, and he was like, you know, I'm I'm riding with Coach Robinson. I'm sticking here. I, I'm still sticking with Texas A and M. I've seen that. I mean, that is what Elijah Robinson has done for Texas A&M. That's what he's done for this program is a lot of these recruits, you're still hanging on to them. When it was looking like you really weren't, you were going to lose a lot of these recruits and it was going to get ugly and it was going to be really bad and everybody was going to move on. You were able to hang on to them because they trust and love Elijah Robinson. Um, And he's clearly, I mean, look what he's done with this team. Look what he's done with, with his unit on this team. They've been great. He's a really good football coach that I think his name deserves to be in the running for this job. Will he get it? I don't know. You know, that's still to be seen. I don't think so because I think that's even riskier than Jeff Trailer because Elijah Robinson truly has had no head coaching experience except for, you know, the interim capacity, a couple games, and so on and so forth. But, you know, like I said, I think it would be interesting. I think it would be an interesting move to give him a shot at this. I don't think it'd be the worst thing in the world, truly. I think if you gave Elijah Robinson a chance at this job, um, I think it'd be risky, 
But I think I think it would guarantee you to recruit at a high level. Um, and I think he's a great locker room guy. And all those things are important. Some might not feel that way. But to me, those things are incredibly, incredibly important to a football team. So um, Elijah Robinson is, is, you know, especially, I'll tell you one thing. If he goes and beats LSU next week, watch out because I think that you could see people start to say, yeah, just keep Elijah Robinson. He can do it, which maybe he can. I'm not saying he can. I'm just saying that he's unproven. And that is what scares me a little bit. You know, I, unproven coaches a little bit freak me out, especially in the position that Texas A&M is currently in, where, you know, you haven't, you, you need a coach to come in and prove right now that they can win at Texas A&M and that Texas A&M ha has the resources to compete at the highest level in college football. So um, it'll be interesting to see if Elijah Robinson, you know, has, gets an interview for the job. I think he's definitely earned to be in the conversation. I think that um, based on the recruits, the locker room stuff, I like him a ton. I um, I think he could surprise some people, maybe even go out and beat LSU or something crazy like that. I just I like him. I think he's going to do something special. So it'll be interesting to see if his name's in the conversation. He definitely has a more you know long list of coaching experience than I kind of had previously thought. So it'll be interesting to see if he gets um, a shot at the job. But Elijah Robinson, someone that if he doesn't get the head coaching job, whoever gets the job, whether it's Jeff Trailer, Mike Elko, whoever gets it, you've got to keep this guy on your staff because he's talented and he's an up-and-coming coach in college football who can recruit at a high level, and the recruits players absolutely love him. We're going to talk about Texas A&M's game against Abilene Christian and why it's more important than just playing Abilene Christian. And we will do that coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. First, we got to talk about our friends over at Athletic Brewing Company. The Athletic Brewing Company game changer of the week. It was Ross Bjork the other day because of he, you know, making the move to get rid of Coach Fisher. Now it's going to be Elijah Robinson. He's done a great job so far in his interim capacity. His interviews have been great. He's just all around done a great job. I've been very impressed with him and what he's done so far with that. So he is the game changer of the week because just like Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game, they make non-alcoholic beers taste good. Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good, full flavor, well-crafted, just like a full-strength beer. Their brews are great-tasting, award-winning, and beat out full-strength beers in global competitions. You can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use code LOCKEDON to get 15% off your first order. That's code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all times. So, now back over to talk about this game against Abilene Christian. You know, when I talk about this game, it's not going to really be, I'm not going to give you an X's and O's breakdown of this game. Because I just don't think the X's and O's are what's important here. I think what's important here is this is your first opportunity to try and keep some of these players on the roster. And the way that that's going to have to happen, I mean, I, I literally, here's the words I wrote down. Sacks, yards, touchdown, running game, receiving, Anaya Smith, Ruben Owens, feed players, um, feed players who might transfer. You're worried about transferring. Feed those guys. Get the football to them. I think that is so important in this game. You want players that are, you know, like get get a Hicks out there, get Reuben Owens out there a ton. You want these players who you're worried about maybe moving on after this season to another program. You want to get them the football. You want them out on the field. You want them sacking um, the quarterback. You want them picking off passes. You want them running the football. That is what you want against Abilene Christian. Now, obviously, you want to go and blow this team out of the water. No questions. Abilene Christian is at home. You want to go do that. But I think this is a good opportunity for the Aggies to once again go in and, and, and get some more numbers to show recruits. I've talked about this a ton, but it's important to be able to show a recruit and say, "Hey, like the um, the you know look at the look at our numbers last year. Look how many sacks we had. Look how many rushing yards we had. Look how many receiving yards we had." 
Um, I think sacks, that's for sure something you can show defensive line recruits. That can that can be numbers you show the guys on the roster. Say, Look what we did last year. Stick around. Do you not want to be a part of this again under a new regime? It's going to be great. Stick around and be a part of this. It's going to be something special. So um, I think making sure that you keep the players on the roster, keep them around, keep them here for a while, that is going to help. That is going to help. Um, next season that is going to be able to help whichever coach, whether it's Elijah Robinson, Jeff Trailer, Mike Elko, whoever takes over a Texas as, te- as Texas A&M's next head coach, if you can keep a good portion of this talent on the roster, that's going to really help this coach out. Now, do I feel like that's a real possibility? Do I feel like um, you're going to be able to keep 50% of this roster to stick around? I don't know. I think you're going to see a good portion of this roster move on. That's just part of it. You know, their coach is gone, a lot of talent. They can go anywhere. A lot of these players can go play anywhere they want to. So you're going to see some guys leave. What I am asking is for enough guys to stick around, enough guys to stick around that you have a roster for the new head coach that can still compete to go nine and three, eight and four, something better if something crazy happens. And then maybe they use the portal well. That is what I'm getting after. Uh, in the recruiting class, same thing. You know, can you keep – you're not going to keep all of these guys, but can you keep a handful of them to where this recru- this class is like still like 17? You know, that is important. And I think this game against Texas – I mean, against um, Abilene Christian is a good opportunity for Elijah Robinson, for this coaching staff, current coaching staff, to do that. It'll be interesting to see – you know, who's out there on the field. I know we've had, there's injuries going on. There's lots of different question marks um, going on around this team right now, but go beat the brakes off Abilene Christian show, you know, who you are, how talented you are, and then get ready to rock and roll for the game against the LSU Tigers in Baton Rouge. That'll be an interesting football game. That will be a fun football game. I think the Aggies are going to go and give them a better fight. I just think there's something about change that get, that creates hope. I think that hope is going to give Texas A&M, um, you know, a little bit of a boost. Even there, even though that game's in Baton Rouge, which is not the most fun place to play, I think, you know, the change, Elijah Robinson taking over, firing him up, running out of the tunnel, can give this team a boost. To where are they going to beat LSU? No, I'm not. I'm not leaning toward that. But I think they might make that football game a whole heck of a lot closer than people imagine it to be right now. That is. Um, Kind of the way I'm looking at this at this game against um, Abilene Christian and then the game against LSU going forward after that. That is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. It's been a ton of fun this week, breaking down the coaching search, talking about potential names, who could be the guy, who could be the next guy for Texas A&M. It really has been a great time. A lot more to come. I think you could see the coach be hired relatively soon. Because of you know what's going on with you want to have a guy in before um, the early signing day, you want to have a guy in for that, you want to have a guy in who can come and help in the transfer portal and all of that different stuff. So um, a lot more fun to come at Locked on Aggies, breaking down this coaching search, who's going to be the next guy. We are also going to talk about the um, game on Saturday. I will bring you a post-game show right after the game goes final on Saturday to talk about that football game. What did we see? What did we um, think about Coach Elijah Robinson's first performance um, as a head coach for Texas A&M? So after the game goes final on Saturday, I will bring that to you all. So like I said, thank you so much for sticking with me through this coaching search. Those of you new um, everydayers here at Locked on Aggies, I really appreciate you being here. Hitting that subscribe button helps a ton hitting the um, reviewing the show on podcast platforms helps a ton. So thank you all for doing that. I appreciate y'all being here every day. It's a ton of fun bringing y'all this podcast on a day-to-day basis. So we have a fun week coming up next week at Locked on Aggies. As I said, we'll have a post-game reaction show after the Abilene Christian game. Everybody have an outstanding weekend. Have a great rest of your day today, and we will see you for the post-game reaction show on Saturday. Thanks, y'all. Have a good rest of your day today and a great weekend.